with a ripped off ticket, Kenry. By the time I'm through, everyone's gonna know about it. Which trip are you on now, Mo? The one where I kill our mistress, Chrissy, hide her body, and get away with it by force of my engaging personality. It's no fancy, Kenry. I know you killed her, I know it. First you freeze me out of the group, and then you do her in. She simply went away. I don't believe it. Is that my Mo? No! time you're coming in. What for? Living without due care and attention. There's someone rather special who wants to talk to you now. Come on. Give a little, give a little, give a little. Ooh, give all right. Give a little. That's a Radio West news spin from Julian Littman. And now for the latest news of our pub pianist, Fred Hickley, who's down there at the Half Moon West Grove. 32 hours without a wink of sleep. Oh, Fred, never mind. Here's a little something for you to play along with. Use one hand, eh? Take a rest. Idiot. Din, there's a personal call for you. Din, I need a bit of help. Oh, with all the airplay I give you? No, I don't mean plugs. It's not for me, Din. It's for somebody else. Do you know Eddie Shoestring? No, he was one of my star pupils. Hang on a minute, Tula. I hope that was okay for you there, Fred. Keep on tickling the ivories, and here's another little something to keep you going. Yeah, Tula. Oh, look, could you talk to Shoestring for me? Um, maybe get him to come over. Oh, thanks. See you, Dim.
you too, lad. That's me. Who are you? Oh, my name is Eddie Shoestring. Dinsdale asked me to drop by. Thanks for coming. Oh, it was a pleasure. I remember hearing Din nattering on about this detective with a funny name. Oh, can't all have boring names, can we? Sure. There's this guy. We call him the Mole. He used to play bass guitar for us. He's been giving me and himself heavy time since we reorganized the band. Without him? Yeah. I mean, the trouble is, he just won't accept it. He keeps hanging around, making trouble, attacking me. Mole's latest stunt got him chucked into the sea. He thinks our managers killed his chick, hidden her body. Some weird fantasy like that. Yeah, well, you better tell me some more about this girl. Chrissy. She had lots of energy to spare. A look at what you call the beauty queen type, won a few parades, all that stuff. Anyway, she was having a thing with both Mole and Mel Kenrick. That's your manager. Being what he is, he thought he should have exclusive rights to Chrissy. Well, he didn't want to share her around. Right. Well, Mole claims that he got booted out of the band. I mean, take your choice. Then Chrissy went missing without a word to either of them. He reckons our Mal got the red mist and killed Chrissy. What, crime of passion? It's a bit out of date, isn't it? Yeah, but it's what Mole says anyway. Look, maybe hearing the truth from someone like you, it might just straighten him out. And get him off your necks. Well, it's a good yarn for your programme. You use it, we don't mind. Thank you very much. Well, okay, I'll go and see this mole anyway. Where can I dig him up? Oh, you'll have to ask a copper. doesn't mean you can do this to me. Yes, it does, because you've done it again, haven't you? Didn't I tell you? Just one more warning, I said. You can't just walk in here and hit me. Oh, can't I? I've done it before, and I'll do it again. I have a special right. Shoestring. Guy from Radio West. Their contracts are with me. Any radio dates, I discuss them. No, he's nothing to do with music. Eddie Shoestring, the private ear. Private ear, private eye. Tula asked him down the pier to talk about something. Gary?
keep the tummy tense. Nearly done. You're next, are you? You've got a nice collection there. Yeah, not bad. Wife doesn't object then. Oh, no. There we are. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Show your husband. All right? Oh, great. Terrific. All right? Happy? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Good. See you then. See ya. Any good customers are yours? Oh, no. Here's a mostly foreign seaport stuff. Stonemason could have done a better job. What do you fancy? Oh, no, I, uh, I don't want a tattoo. I've got a very uh, sensitive skin. Oh, no worries on that school, mate. I can... I'm looking for mole. Mole? Butterflies I've got, eagles, snakes, but... Look, what do you do when you want to have a... Uh, when nature calls? Oh, I just use the public facilities down the shore. I want to talk to a punk guitar man named of Mole. He ducked into the shop, didn't he? Oh, now, wait on. Who are you? I've been asked to help find his missing girlfriend. Oh, well, he's got a room upstairs. But you could try the Tivoli Cafe. It's a one tea bag joint down the front. Thanks. I know it. No, it's okay. Sit down. What do you do? Bump into something inside the neck? I just bit my lip. I'll stop you talking. I wouldn't listen if I did talk. About Christy? Police believe came right when you said that she'd just scarpered. They suggested I did the same with appropriate gestures. Well, Tula said that you reckon the group's manager sacked you and killed Chrissy when he found out that you'd been holding hands under the pier without his permission. Well, that's true. Yeah, well, isn't it just possible that this Chrissy girl might have left, you know, got sick of both you and Kenry? I, I, I know that's very difficult to believe, but if I'm to help, I have to explore all the possibilities, like friends or people she might have gone to. Another bloke, even? No way. OK. Uh, parents? The dead. Kenrick sort of half adopted her. She looks like that. She's not quite so dull, like, but they touched her up to make her face look like all the rest. But this date's only last week. Yeah, but it was taken six months ago. Old Kenrick was proud as Popeye showing his set of photos about. But what he didn't know was that I took Christy back from that photo session and I made it with her all the way back in my mate's van. Well, would that mate have told Kenrick about you and Christy, you know, doing it in the back of the van? You are a private eye, aren't you? I mean, you find it and you stir it, yeah, when I tell you that Kenrick's an evil bastard, you don't believe me. I didn't say that. Look, Chrissy loved nobody better than she loved herself, but she was pretty turned on to me. I just want to know what Kenrick did to her, you know? All I'm asking is that Kenrick pays his dues. For her. Yes, I remember when she posed for this. She had it all in the right places, did Chrissy? Had. When Chrissy isn't winning beauty contests around the UK, she likes nothing better than to cuddle with her pet Irish wolfhound, Malcolm, beneath the pier on the seafront at West Country Resort, where she lives. Lucky dog, Malcolm. Cheeky bitch. She means me. My name's Malcolm. I know. What else do you know, Seamus? <laughs> Every private eye is tagged Seamus, right? I wonder what choice bit of phrasing would fit you. Well, modesty inhibits my descriptive powers. Something pretty punchy, I have no doubt. <laughs> Up to you. OK. Something pretty punchy, OK. Please. How about uh, Malcolm Kenrick? Banished to the latter years of his third decade, was rather like... An overfed vulture flapping after the bird of you. <laughs> you came to trade insults? No, not at all. I just want to find out what happened to Chrissy. I found I've been sharing my precious jewel with various members of the musical Riff Raff, one of whom was our friend 
mole. Chrissy was never one to use a dagger when a sword would do. So, if you find her shoestring, no need to give her my love. I wouldn't dream of it. Where is she? Oh. Mount Kenrick. Yes, I remember this. Yes. Um, hang on a minute, will you? Yeah, sure. Why are you so anxious to find Chrissy, then? So you know her as well, do you? I ran second to her in a beauty contest last season. She lived with the bloke that owned the pier. Also happened to be one of the judges. He was on the panel, too. <laughs> Chance of a young virgin got in such a crooked game. Well, talk about odds against. Fix was in so deep, Eleanor Troy would be hard pushed to earn place money. So, uh, Mr. Cantley and Kenrick are, uh, buddies. Kenrick's on the Resorts Entertainments Committee. They whistle. Cantley dances. <laughs> He's an ex-actor. Yeah? Quite successful once. I don't recognise him. On the West End stage. Until he developed a slight handicap in his career. Couldn't remember a single line. In his last appearance, he had to mime the entire final act. Oh, it's a comedy, I hope. Oh, a tragedy. Well, tell me, have you seen Chrissy lately? No, not for months. Ah, oh, Mr. Shulstrom. I didn't mention my name. Famed uh, boy, I recognize your face. From news photographs, the stage, spotlight, somewhere. He needs a prompt. Uh, we were talking about Chrissy. Ah, I saw her only last week. I was going to give her Alison's job here. Nicola. Sorry, Nicola. I couldn't give Nicola, I mean Chrissy, Nicola's job, this job, because she, that is Chrissy, was totally, I mean, horrendously unreliable. Uh, yeah, when was all this? Uh, just last week, yeah. Now, are you sure about that? Because as far as I know, Chrissy was last seen some five weeks back. No, it's last week, old boy. Last week. Um, Tuesday. I'm absolutely certain of that. Yeah, of course. Alive and well? Take my word. Yeah. It looks good there. What's this one for? It's a documentary award on what happened to money made in the slave trade. One of the less illustrious chapters of this city's history. Shall I take it down until the producer's presentation? Good idea, Sonia. Doesn't the producer get to hang it at home? You can always come in here and look at it. Who knows? We may be collecting one for you before long. Thank you, Sonia. Well, what do you want to see me about? This girl. I think you know her. I do? Yeah, she was in a beauty contest last year, Don, and you were one of the judges. What am I supposed to remember? Her face? Or the silicone-assisted superstructure? No, her name. Chrissy Leander. As a representative of Radio West, I'm asked to sit on juries for everything from Miss Bath to the West Country Dairymaid. Yeah, well, she won this title at the seaside. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, she won it easily. But I never talked to her then or after. She's nothing in my life. Oh, no. You don't get me on that count. No, it's right that I'm not interested in you. It's one of your fellow judges, Malcolm Kenrick. Did you know that Chrissy was his girlfriend? No, I didn't. Are you suggesting there was some sort of a fix? Well, not necessarily by you. Oh, not necessarily by me. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. What can you tell me about Kenrick? Well, he's brash, clever, owns the pier and one or two other enterprises. Put a stack of money into a new marina, I heard. Got an interest in a pop group. Yeah, Tula and her band. Right. Oh, you know them? Yeah, I've met the lady. I also visited Kenrick in his little home. Oh, don't keep me in suspense, Eddie. Watch the pitch. Well, the beauty queen is missing and the band's ex-bass player is shouting foul play. I just want to trace her. Well, she should stand out in a crowd. Don, I don't want to wait till my next program. Din's on the air now. I could save time by having an appeal made by him. Let's come over you. You usually gatecrash anyway. I'm just being polite. Eddie, I like the shirt. Pal wants to see you urgently. I can't risk going out there at the moment. There's not the shoestring moving about. He suggested a place.
Yes, he is. He's with Mr. Satchley. Shall I put you through? No, hang on. It's Mrs. Bayless for you. Hi. Any luck? Well, nothing's filtered through here about Kenrick. Seems to be a pillar of society. Though there is a slight feeling that the pillar isn't too straight. Yeah, and the girl. Is she officially missing? No. But I can tell you something about Molcom. I know about the mole. No, you don't. For further information, why not speak to his brother, Police Constable Brian Malcolm? Hello, officer. Yeah, if you're Brian Malcolm. That's me. Got your hands full, haven't you? Bloody vandals. Give a spectacular accident. I found him. Hello, officer. Yeah, I'm Eddie Shoestring from Radio West. I'm working on behalf of your brother, Mole. You are not looking for that girl of this. You must be short of things to do, Mr. Private, dear. Well, wasting my time, am I? We checked it out. The girl was a tramp. She's simply gone to London. Well, she was officially traced by the police. She was officially checked by me. The force have got better things to do. I've made it perfectly clear to Gary. Yeah, with your fist. I should have done it a damn sight sooner. Look, all I ask is you don't feed his bloody silly fantasy with this lost girl caper. It's all an illusion. Well, what if it isn't? Oh, not you too, mate. I saw one of the psychiatrists about Gary's mental state. My brother's at the second stage of schizophrenia. telling you, Mr. Shoestring heard exactly what you said you wanted him to hear. And even though I say so myself as a performance, it was well nigh perfect. Did he believe it or not? Well, if you mean was there sufficient suspension of disbelief, as we say in the business, um, was he buying it? Well, no, perhaps not. You must have been a bloody awful actor. I bet you killed off seaside reps single-handed. Affairs fair. What you asked directed towards a cynic like this shoestring chap, well, it would have strained the talents of a Finney, McKellen. All right, thanks a bunch. But I need three days undisturbed to see this deal through. I can't have bystanders like shoestring or the law around. Can you not clear him from the stage? I mean, another deed of dreadful note, perhaps? As you may have noticed, even the most casual of murders off stage call forth protests from some nobody or other. It's the last option on him on Malcolm, and also on you, Cantley, dear. It's an appeal for a missing beauty queen. What else, knowing Eddie? Her name's Chrissy Leander, five feet five, blonde, blue-eyed and beauteous. No wonder Eddie's rather anxious to make her acquaintance. You crafty deadly. The man with the low profile, the high forehead and the worn-out heels. He pounds his lonely beat, solving problems for you, our Radio West listeners, our very own private ear. But to remind you, Chrissy, if you've seen her or know her whereabouts, give any issue string a call here at Radio West, 329 Meters.
Perhaps a little smile, a little carefree cock of the head. Look, I'm at work, not on the promenade. Instinctively, I know you're the treasure around here, Sonia, isn't it? The sprocket, the tiny cog that really makes this radio station run. Big smile now! That's it, you see? Terry Posnick really knows where the gold is, the heart of the gold. There you are, ducks, one for the mantelpiece. Give it to your boss with an application for a rise. No obligation, print rates on the back. Mr. Posnick, what do you want? Urge your appeal. Eddie's shoestrings. Something of interest, as you might say. What, have you seen Chrissy? Who are you? I'm shoestring. Terry Posnett, beach photographer. Oh, how'd you do? Well, have you seen her? Better than that, mate. Just a minute, shoestring. I'm a professional photographer, so if you want to do business, you know what I mean? <sighs> how much? 20 quid, including that. Done. So, when did you take this? Snapped it on a promenade just the other day. Cow said she wanted it, but never followed up. And I heard it on Radio West. Same girl, isn't it? So, this is Chrissy. Yeah, the photographer took it a couple of days ago. And that's the newspaper picture. Oh, and this is Chrissy. Yeah. Well, what makes you think? <clears throat> Hello. Yes, Sonia. Yes, he is. What? Yeah. Right, we'll, we'll ring him straight back and tell him I'll drive there right away. OK? Bye-bye. Seems that Kenrick's come up with a disappearing lady. I'll see you. This is Chrissy. Oh. Drink? Yeah. Uh, orange juice. I've got or orange juice. I like it. End of the pier. Laughing sea behind you. You do great in TV commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get me into one? <laughs> I was going to introduce you, but it seems uh, rather unnecessary. Well, I know you already. Your photos don't do you justice. That's nice. The last time I met Mal here, he had only bitter words and sour memories. Water under the pier now. Tula asked you to find a girl. Now you've found her. Satisfied? I've been away. I came back to see Mal. You must know. A reconciliation? She tried to get a job with entertainments, but that idiot Cantley thought he was doing me a favour and got rid of her. After that, I just wandered about, not having the courage to call back here and say sorry for being a stupid bitch. And this horrible little street photographer tried to pick me up. Yeah, I know, I saw the photo. Solved the mystery, though, didn't it? I told you, Eddie. She simply took off. Yeah, sure. But what about the mole? I mean, couldn't you just see him and tell him whatever a girl tells worn-out lovers? Mole? Do I ever just see that crazy guy again? Just tell him you're okay. I mean, you can't do any harm. He frightens me. I don't want to see him again, you promise. I know, I did. Shoestring is full of suspicion. I want to speak to Eddie Shoestring. Is he there? I tell Eddie I've got to see him really soon. Explain to Eddie, I've seen something in this town. He's seen a weird duck. There's a biggest... What are you doing here? Have you met Chrissy? 
Yeah, at the end of the pier. She and Kenrick were a picture in togetherness. If it really was, Chrissy. What do you mean? Look, after you left, something struck me about that photograph. I mean, her sense of fashion. What about it? Look, the kind of girl you were talking about would never be seen dead in last year's fashions. I mean, look at the shoes, the trousers, the flares. Hopelessly wrong. That photograph wasn't taken a couple of days ago, as you were led to believe, and I can prove it. I talked to the owner of this shop. When he bought it ten months ago, he changed the name. come in an hour ago whatever you're getting into eddie be careful huh it's not me i'm worried about it's mole found Mole dead upstairs. Overdose. Uh, I thought he was off the stuff. Poor Mole. They're all up there. Hey! All right, Shoestring. I saw you come out back there. What do you know about weapons for my brother? About his death, nothing. But why did you turn up? I tried to reach my brother, but he's out on patrol. Explain to Eddie, I found something that'll blow this town sky high. It's in a weird dump. It's the biggest stash of... He swallowed LSD. Big dose. Oh, they were shoved down his throat. Do you want to hand this in? A stash. Overdose. You'd better talk to you, String. Well, what can I tell you? Kenrick fooled me into thinking I'd found your brother's ex-girlfriend. So Chrissy obviously isn't around. Mole's dead. I don't know, maybe he was right with his murder story. I don't know what she say will implicate Kenrick in Gary's death. I'll put my colleagues on it. What the bloody will go on? Yeah, exactly. So why don't you let me carry on with it for a day or two? I'm taking a risk if anyone knows this conversation. You want to find out, don't you? Would you might like to read the small print. It's too bleeding late now, isn't it? I don't need a ten-page letter to let me know I've been badly screwed. The German deal is signed and sealed. You've got no idea, have you? Kroutland, especially Hamburg, is wrong for what we're trying to do. We are not going to play not one note! Oh, excuse me. Come down to Earth, Tula. Remember your flight is on Sunday. Otherwise, you and the boys will not only not play, you will have great difficulty in walking again. They call us vicious?
Tula. T for trip. with acid. At least we don't have to go to Hamburg. We're free from Kenrick. Admitted killing the real Chrissy then, did he? Man of passion, Kenrick. Killed her in a blind fit for messing with Mole. I feel bad about the Mole. I mean, he just really had a bad deal. Well, next time you see him, see one for him. <laughs> 